Welcome to the final exam, question number 46. It asks, what is the ratio of the effective length of a column to its least radius of gyration column? And when it says effective length, uh, first of all, we're talking about a column. Let's write that down, why not? Column, all right, so we've got a column. Let's draw it three-dimensional. It says, what is the ratio of the effective length of a column to its least radius of gyration? And I, I guess I don't know a, a good, great way of describing this. It's more of one of those memorization questions. So hopefully when you, when you see this word, column, one thing should come to mind. If it's a long column, KL over R. KL over R is the slenderness ratio, and it says to its least radius of gyration. So, this is your length. If you multiply it by K, that makes it your effective length. And remember, K is, you go into your steel book and it has thing, uh, different Ks for, uh, this would be a fixed free connection. And then you have pin pinned. I think pin pinned is a 1.0. I could get my steel book and I, I just encourage you to to tab that and you can just put K values and that's what the K values are for. It's uh, effective length over radius of gyration. So it says what is it called this? It is called your slenderness ratio. All right, and then let's look at the answers. So we have A, B, C, and D. Poisson's ratio, that's a no. Poisson's ratio has to do with, I don't think they went over it at all in, in this uh, study guide, but I'll go over it real quick. Actually, let's go ahead and go with the right answer. So slenderness ratio is C. If that's all you're interested in, please move on. If you want to know what Poisson's ratio, I will explain it, and we'll see Young's modulus and section modulus. I'll try to get on a quick explanation for those as well. Uh, Poisson's ratio can usually be found in the backs of textbooks. It's just tabulated for each different material, so it's different material. It's different for each material. I'm not going to write this all out. So let's say you have a a pipe or a, a bar, let's say. More of a bar, a round bar. And you stretch it. We've already, we already know that it will elongate. Let's say it elongates on both sides. But in addition to elongating, this will end up, and I'm sure you've seen this, is eventually it's going to come in like that. And I'm going to overstate this. It's going to come in like that once again. I might not, it might not be overstating it, but I'm just showing you what I'm talking about. The Poisson's ratio has to do with the ratio from the def how much is it going to deform longitudinally around or along the axis compared to how much it's going to deform when it's um, transversely, like this this way. So if it's stretched this much, how much will it come in? That's a very basic idea of what Poisson's ratio is, and it's different for each for each type of material. So you can look that up, and it might be a little bit over the the content or above where we're at right now. So I'm going to move on. So that's not the answer. And then Young's modulus. We know that's not the answer. Young's modulus is E. It's also known as the modulus, left, modulus of elasticity. But what it is is stress over strain. And this is how I write stress when I'm talking about material properties usually. But you could say, you know, stress over strain. I've, I always see strain written like that. But remember that the best way to, to remember this, and hopefully I'm going to draw this so it can stick in your head. The, the reason this is important is because that when you're looking at the elastic region, 
that Young's modulus is constant, and that's where it's it works for. And this is stress. This is strain. So this is stress. This is the slope stress over strain. Remember, rise over run, rise over run, rise over run. So that's the slope. So this is a hopefully if you can remember this this is kind of like e it's the slope so for steel that's going to be 29000 that that rise over run 29 or sorry 29000 ksi and that gets to be also important when you when you go over the the yield stress the point of elasticity and then you start strain hardening let's say you you do end up stressing it about right here so it'll come over here and then it will, it will actually go down at that same modulus of elasticity or Young's modulus but I, I believe that so that'll be your permanent deformation deformation all right anyways not the answer C we said was the answer slenderness ratio D section modulus section modulus is S and that equals and, and hopefully you can remember this from you, you can say our stress and bending equals M over S or MC over I. So if you think about it, uh, S equals I over C. I over C. And you, you just flip these and put this on top. <laughs> Hopefully you understand what I'm saying. S equals I over C. So it's, it's similar... I'm saying similar, not obviously not exactly, to I. It's how much area is away from a neutral axis. How, how good is this at resisting bending is how I like to think about it. So once again, your answer is C, and the is slenderness ratio. KL over R is your slenderness ratio.